welcome back to C1 Novel and Vocab oh, Week 18. Oh my goodness. Thank you for joining me. Let's go. Let's get started. So, hi. My name is Miss Kimberly. And the goal of our session is to have students understand each word in our vocabulary workbook and to be cognizant, which means to know some of the phrases from our novel that may be difficult for us to understand. And that was me <laughs> when I was your age in third grade. And I'll be here to help you along this journey. So today's agenda, what will we do? First, we're gonna go over week 18 vocabulary. Two, go over the extra example sentences. We're going to skip three because there are no difficult phrases from our novel this week because we're done with a cricket kind of perfect. And then lastly, you'll have to review and self-study as you always do every week. So let's go. Ah, but Miss Kimberly, why do you keep coming and telling me to watch this video? Why is it so important? First, we're going to go over all the vocabulary in our workbook and this is to help with your vocabulary acquisition. Let's think of it as a little word bank in our brain and I'm continually to put more words in it so that you can know them. By learning the definition, synonym, and antonym of the word, this can significantly, which means greatly, improve your reading comprehension and enhance your contextual usage. Second, this is for our example sentences. Miss Kimberly, there's already two example sentences. Why are we going over a total of four? This is to help with your writing variation. By looking at a variety of different example sentences with one specific vocabulary word, students can learn how to use the word in different sentence structures and not have boring, repetitive sentences. So, if you haven't already, please pause the video and go get your vocabulary workbook so that you're not just staring at the screen. I want you to look at the screen and at your book here. And please turn with me to week 18, which is page 150. So please go get your book and turn to 150. And you will see that our first word comes from TED Talks and the word is researcher. Everyone say researcher. Good, the synonym is an analyst and the part of speech is a noun because it is a person and the definition says, a person whose job is to study a subject very carefully. So they are probably researching, trying to find more data and information about some type of topic or subject. And in your TED Talks book, the sentence says, researchers such as psychologists study human behavior. Yes, researchers who are trying to study a certain subject, and here psychologist is a person who studies human behavior. That's in our TED Talks book. The example sentence, let's read together, please read with me. I wanna hear those voices. Ready? Three, two, one. The researcher set up several experiments to test her hypothesis. And what is a hypothesis, everyone? Mm-hmm, it is a guess. <laughs> it's a guess of what you think is going to happen. So the researcher put up a lot of different experiments. They decide to do XYZ tests and then they're trying to see if their guess is correct. That's all part of a researcher's job to try to find out more information. And let's look here. Extra sentences. Researchers are trying to find a cure for the disease. So yes, a lot of doctors are the ones who come and treat you at the hospital, but there are also researchers behind them who work along with them and scientists who try to find a cure for a disease. Uh, the next sentence says, the researcher spent hours in the lab studying the new bacteria. <gasps> so we're in the science lab with our uh, microscope and we're looking through it and we keep looking through the microscope to see what type of bacteria it is, and do different types of tests to figure out. Very good. Everyone say researcher. Next word, number two, is appreciation. Everyone say appreciation. The synonym is thankfulness, and the antonym is disrespect. 
The part of speech is a noun, and it means the act of recognizing or understanding that something is valuable or important. So it's the act of being thankful and showing your thankfulness. Um, in our TED Talks, it says, it's a feeling of thankfulness, a feeling of appreciation. So here, it says a feeling of thankfulness, comma, a feeling of appreciation. So thankfulness and appreciation here, as you can see, are synonyms, which is why it is used in that above sentence. Let's read the example together. Ready? Three, two, one. We should show appreciation for having basic things such as food and water. Meaning, we should show how thankful we are because we have enough food to eat and we have enough clean water to drink also. So never forget, you should always be, oh, thank you mom and dad, or grandma or grandpa, or aunt or uncle. <laughs> so next, let's look at the sentence here. It says, she showed her appreciation by writing a thank you note. So I did, um, for Teacher Appreciation Day, a lot of students gave their teachers notes of saying, thank you, you're the best teacher. It was a very nice gesture, guys. Good job. The next line, it says, the students, or, oh, not the students. Let's start again. It says, the teacher gave all the students MI dollars as a sign of her appreciation of their hard work. So usually, probably at the end of class, your teacher will give you an MI dollar saying, good job today. Very nice work. Great participation. It's a way to show our appreciation, thankfulness that you were being such good students in class. Good job. Let's go to number three. The word is psychologist. Everyone say psychologist. We just had it in our first word, researcher, but let's see what it says for our definition here. It's a noun, and it's a person who specializes in the study of mind and behavior, how we act. In our TED Talks, it said, some psychologists call this an attitude of gratitude. Oh, look at that rhyme. I like it. The attitude of gratitude. So psychologists, a person who studies our brain and how we interact with others and our behaviors and our mind. And let's look at the example sentence together and read it. Ready? Three, two, one. The man went to see a psychologist to try to overcome his fear of spiders. Mm, I don't like spiders either, but I don't have a fear of them. But this person has a fear, meaning every time he thinks about it or sees it, he's like, ugh. So he went to the psychologist to see if they would be able to help him, maybe talk through his fear. Let's look at the example over here. It says, the psychologist visited our class to promote her new book on mental health and stress. So this psychologist wrote a book about mental health, being healthy in the brain and, you know, thinking about good thoughts. And her other, her book also was talking about stress. So the psychologist came to the school to talk about her book. The next sentence, it says, he wants to become a psychologist to help children. Mm, yes. <clears throat> there are child psychologists who also help children um, who may feel a bit stressed or they have other mind or behavior things that they want to work out with. Good. <clears throat> Number four. Our word is blessing. Everyone say blessing. The synonym is a benefit and the antonym is a curse. It is a noun and it means something that is good or helpful. Something that you are thankful for. In the book it said it's being aware of the good things in your life. Appreciating small things. Counting your blessings. So in order to be happy, you should be counting your blessings, counting how thankful you can be about, you know, the sun shining today, having, I don't know, an air, a working air conditioner or yummy food to eat. These are all things that you can be counting your blessings for. And it's appreciating the small things. Those are all different types of blessings because not many people or not all people have the same advantages or benefits in life. Let's read the example together. It says, I consider having many good friends to be a blessing in my life. Mmm, very good. That is a very good blessing. If you have a lot of friends, that's very nice. If you have a few, that's also very nice. If you have friends at all, it's a good thing. Example here. It says, the sunny weather was a blessing for their picnic. Why? Because it could have rained, it could have snowed, it could have been super windy. 
But the sunny weather was something that they're thankful for, something that's good or helpful for them to have their picnic outside. Next, it says good health is a blessing that should not be taken for granted. Yes, having a nice body that's healthy, it's something that we should also be thankful for and count as a blessing, something that's good and helpful for us. Great, now we're done with the TED Talks book or TED Talks words. Let's go on to the next page on page 151. And these words are all review. They are review from weeks prior, um, starting from, I believe, week 13. Yes? They are week, they're, <laughs> sorry. They are review words from week 13 until week 17. And this is to help you with your novel test. So let's go over them. Uh, I'm going to go through these a bit quicker because we've already reviewed them. So if you would like to, you can also go back to the videos before and watch those or just follow along here. Number five, our word is prodigy. Everyone say prodigy. The synonym is a genius and the part of speech is a noun. The definition says a highly talented child or youth. And in the book it said he was a prodigy, which means that even when he was a little kid, he could play like a grown up. Yes, uh, a prodigy, someone who's very, very good at what they're doing, but they're good ever since they were a child. An example, let's read together. Three, two, one. He was considered a prodigy because he could understand difficult math. So say that you're doing like math that's for like college students, but you're in third grade, they're probably a math prodigy. Let's look here. These sentences at the bottom are new, so pay attention here. It says the art prodigy had her first gallery showing at 12. <gasps> wow, so this student was so good at art and so talented that she had her own showing at a gallery, meaning like at a museum, of her own art. Wow. Next slide, it says she was a prodigy in science, winning many awards and finding new discoveries. Maybe... This child prodigy was thinking of a new experiment, and they were a researcher, and they had their hypothesis. All these words from before. Very good. Next one, number six is revolutionary. Everyone say revolutionary. The synonym is progressive, and the antonym is old-fashioned. The part of speech is an adjective, and it means causing a complete or dramatic change. And in the book, it says, my method, revolutionary, said Lester Rennett. Uh, let's read the example together. Three, two, one. 3D printers are revolutionary because they use less energy to produce things. And they can make a lot of cool things if you've seen a 3D printer before. Revolutionary, meaning they have complete change and dramatic change over something. Let's look here. It says, the waterproof band-aid was once considered a revolutionary invention. Now we're like, oh, waterproof band-aid, that's, that's been here for a while. It's old-fashioned now. But a long time ago, when it was first invented, it was considered a revolutionary invention. Next, it says, people are always wanting to discover something revolutionary so that it can change the world. So yes, when we're trying to think of something revolutionary, we're trying to think of how can this help the earth and the humans of the world have a more convenient life so that it is revolutionary, a dramatic change. Number seven, our word is geezer. Everyone say geezer. The synonym is a senior and the part of speech is a noun and this is a slang type of word um, and it means an old man. It could be a nice old man, it could be a mean old man, it's just an old man. And in our book it says, but this guy is a true geezer, and I got a spare box in the truck, so I give it to him, right? I think this is when um, Zoe's dad was talking to his friend, or this is his friend, dad's friend talking. Uh, let's look at down here, it says, despite being a geezer, oops, let's go back to the top, the example sentences. It says, the geezer was hated by all children because he always yelled at them. That's not very nice. 
<laughs> Let's look down here now. It says, despite being a geezer, he is very active in the community. Maybe he was helping out, um, picking up trash outside in the neighborhood, or maybe he was just friendly with all the neighborhood children. Who knows? Next one, it says, the old geezer enjoyed feeding the birds every morning. <gasps> yes, whenever I go up Changsan Mountain, there is this man, this old man, He's always feeding the birds and he has nuts in his hands. So I thought of this sentence. Very good. Everyone say geezer. Next, number eight is our word exclusively. Everyone say exclusively. The synonym is only and the part of speech is an adverb. And it means limited to a specific thing or group. So it's only for a thing or only for a group. In the book, it said, two weeks from now, we'll need to start working exclusively on your performorama selection, meaning only on what she's going to be performing there. Example, let's read together. The lounge is exclusively for VIP members only. So this lounge, this fancy area is only for the VIP members. Let's look here. It says the sale is exclusively online, so you'll have to pay full price in stores. Then I would rather just buy it online. <laughs> so this sale, maybe it's 50% off, a half off price, but it's exclusively online, only if you buy it online. Next one, it says the restaurant serves meals exclusively made with vegetarian ingredients. So there's maybe no meat served at this restaurant because exclusively vegetarian ingredients. Number nine. The word is amnesia. Everyone say amnesia. It is a noun and it means a partial, meaning a little, or total, meaning the whole thing, loss of our memory. And then in the book it says, People in movies only quit the piano when their wife dies or they get amnesia or they lose their arm in the war. So get amnesia, to lose your memory. Let's read the example. It says, three, two, one. The woman who suffered from amnesia couldn't remember her name. So she woke up, she's like, where am I? Who am I? What's my name? Because she considered amnesia. Over here, it says, the movie's main character struggles with amnesia. Yes, there are some movies that have characters that have amnesia. It's quite sad. Next one, it says, sometimes amnesia may improve as your brain heals from the injury that caused it. So maybe you got amnesia from bumping your head in a really bad car crash. But as your brain heals, maybe your memory, your amnesia will come back. Your memories will come back and your amnesia will be healed. Let's go to the next page, 152. Our word is tier. Everyone say tier. The synonym is level, and the part of speech is a noun, and the definition says a row in a structure. Um, in the book, it says the bottom tier is covered with pink and orange and yellow roses. So the bottom part of it. Let's read the example together. We wanted a better view of the stage, so we chose to sit on the top tier so that they can see everything looking down. Let's look here. It says, the cake's bottom tier was chocolate, and the top tier was vanilla. Mm, two flavors in one. Yum. <laughs> Let's look at the example. On the other side, it says, the baseball stadium's tiers provided a great view of the field. So as you go on up, you're able to see the whole baseball field, but that also means the players are getting smaller. Tier. Number 11, everyone say prejudice. Prejudice. The synonym is intolerance, and the antonym is tolerance. It is a noun and it means an unreasonable dislike of a particular group of people or things. So you don't like something, mm, just because. Not a very good thing. So in the book it says, so you won't have to worry about one judge having a prejudice against your style or selection. This is when they're saying that there are other judges that are going to come in and also um, judge the performorama presentation and recital. 
an example let's read together it says don't have prejudice against people just because they look different than you yes as you can see in the picture there's a lot of pointing going on it's not a very nice thing to have a prejudice against someone means that you're just not liking them for no reason let's look here it says she has a prejudice towards snakes and thinks they are evil animals <sighs> Maybe she, long time ago, when she was younger, read a book about a snake who was evil, and now she just has this prejudice against all snakes. Next one, it says, Prejudice can create barriers between communities, preventing people from understanding each other. So yes, we wouldn't want to have prejudice against others so that we can become a bit more open-minded, have more friends, be cordial and nice to everyone. Next one, number 12, our word is weave. Everyone go like this with your hand and dance with me. <laughs> weave. The synonym is zigzag, and it is a verb to go by moving quickly and changing direction often. And in the book it said, so I have to weave around people to get to the front of the room where the judges are, meaning they're so crowded so you have to move around and get around people. The example, read with me. Motorcycles can weave through roads easily because they are smaller than cars. However, that's quite dangerous if the motorcycle keeps weaving in and out and in and out of different lanes. Let's look here. <clears throat> it says the rabbit weaved through the bushes to escape the fox. <gasps> so the fox was chasing the rabbit and then the rabbit decided to go zigzag. Next, it says they had to weave through the maze to find the exit. Oh my, if you've ever been to a big, big maze, um, you would have to walk here, then you'll go here, and then you're like at a dead end, then you have to go back. And then you have to find another way. You're weaving through the maze to find the way out. Very nice. Let's go to the word curtsy. Everyone say curtsy. It is to bow. And the part of speech is a verb because it's an action word and it means to bend the knees with one foot in front of the other as a greeting. So you're bowing to them. Um, in the book, very short, it says, I curtsy. So let's look at the other example. Let's read together. The lady curtsied when she saw the prince approaching her. It's a form of showing respect to curtsy. Hmm. Uh, let's read here. It said the ballet teacher taught the students how to properly curtsy after a performance. So usually after a performance, all the ballerinas will line up and then they will curtsy and bow. Uh, next one, let's read together. It says she curtsied before leaving the stage, thanking everyone for their support. So she curtsies and she maybe blows some kisses saying, thank you, thank you. <laughs> curtsy. Fourteen, the last word for our novel book, our word is engrave. Everyone say engrave. The synonym is carve and the part of speech is a verb. And the definition is to cut words or pictures or patterns into the surface of metal or stone. So we're kind of like digging in and engraving, carving something out. It says from the book, your name will be engraved onto it. And the example, let's read together. His title was engraved on the nameplate so everyone could know who he was. So maybe in Mr. TJ's office, oh, does he have one? I'm not quite sure. Maybe if you were to have a nameplate, it would say TJ Principal. <laughs> Next one, let's look down here. It says, the artist will engrave a beautiful pattern on the vase. Ooh, so maybe if you have like a flower vase at home also and it has a pattern or a picture or word carved into it, that means it was engraved in. The next one, it says, he carefully engraved the initials on the bracelet, making it a unique gift. Maybe he wrote K-A for Kimberly on and gave it to me as a present. <laughs> engrave all right now let's go to page 153 and these are your textbook words everyone are you ready so now these are fresh new words so make sure that you're paying close attention 
15, repeat after me, the word is hydrated. Hydrated. The synonym, oh, there is none. The antonym is dehydrated. Hydrated is an adjective and the definition is having absorbed enough water or other liquid. So you have enough liquid in your body or something else. Um, from our textbook, it says, so how can you cut down on costs and waste but stay hydrated and healthy? So how can you stop using so much money but also stay hydrated, having enough water in your body? Let's look at the example together and read it together. Three, two, one. When you're hiking on a hot day, stay hydrated and drink water constantly. Yes. Um, whenever I go up Changsan, this is my second time talking about going to Changsan. Whenever I go up Changsan, make sure that I have a water bottle with me so that I, whenever I'm sweating and losing my perspiration and sweat, I also have some water to also drink. Let's look here. It says she kept her plants hydrated with scheduled regular watering. So if you have plants at home and you don't want them to wither and wilt, you should hydrate them and give them lots of water. Very good. Next one, it says she used a face mask to keep her skin hydrated. Uh, so we like to have face masks to keep the hydration inside of our skin so that it's nice and pretty. <laughs> hydrated. Everyone say hydrated. Next, number 16, our word is impact. Everyone say impact. The synonym is effect, and the part of speech is a noun. The definition says to have a strong influence on someone or something. And the book is very short. It just said eco impact. But what does that mean? Let's look at the example and read together. Ready? Three, two, one. Acts of kindness, no matter how small, can create a positive impact. Meaning, if you're being nice to someone, even just saying thank you or giving them a smile, it can create a positive impact and maybe make their day a little bit better. To have an influence on someone. Let's look here. It says, in science class, they studied the impact of pollution on wildlife. So they're talking about how pollution mm, doesn't have a good impact on wildlife. Maybe it's taking away their habitat. Maybe it's just ruining the food chain. And it's not a good thing. Impact. To have an influence over something. Next one. It says the teacher's encouragement had a positive impact on the students. Boosting their confidence. So maybe your teacher is like, wow, Kimberly, you did such a good job on this recent test. I'm so proud of you. You're improving so much. Keep it up. So that encouragement is like, oh, that was so nice. It has a positive impact on the student and it boosts their confidence. Me, yes, I can do it. English is so easy for me. Hopefully for you too. You guys are all smart. Don't worry. Impact. Number 17, our word is cylinder. Cylinder. The part of speech is a noun and it means an object with a flat circular ends and long straight sides. So I don't have something cylinder in front of me right now, but if you were to think of a Pringles can, Pringles can, it's round and singular. It kind of looks like the picture in our book. It's kind of hard to tell, but singular cylinder is like the Pringles can. Let's read what the book said. It said cylinder gardening uses containers that can be placed almost anywhere. So this type of cylinder gardening is good because you can do it anywhere and maybe stack it up. It's good. Uh, let's read the example together. Are you ready? Roll up the poster and keep it in a cylinder so it won't get wrinkled. Good. So if you see some art students, they have like a cylinder that they hold and they usually have their artwork all rolled up inside. <gasps> oh, if you think about it, how a kimbap looks like that size and how it's rolled up. That's also a cylinder shape. Let's look here. It says, she put her hand in the cylinder case, reaching for the last Pringle chip. So now 
there we go. You can imagine what a cylinder case looks like. Next one, it says the flashlight had a long, thin cylinder. So it's very long, flashlight, turn it on to see. Cylinder. Number 18, the word is intensive. Everyone say intensive. The synonym is demanding, and the part of speech is an adjective, meaning needing or using great energy or effort. And in the book it said, could be worse than beans grown by less energy intensive methods in another country. So intensive just means, whoa, 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 a lot of hard work put into it. Example, let's read together. Soldiers go through intensive training to make sure they're physically prepared. Yes, maybe they go through um, having to go through some different workshops, push-ups, pull-ups. Yes, a lot of different types of intensive training. Let's look here. It says he joined an intensive language class to improve his skills, practicing every day. So maybe this language class had, it was so intensive, you have to use a lot of energy and effort. So he had to do a lot of homework, read a lot of books. Who knows? Next one, it says she went through intensive training to become a firefighter. Yes, similar to the sentence above where soldiers have to go through intensive training, so do firefighters. Maybe go through a lot of different types of training. Oh, look at that picture up there. That's also different types of intensive training. It just looks like fun monkey bars, but imagine having a lot of heavy equipment on and it's very intensive. Woo! Next page. On page 154, number 19, this is for speech. Our word is recent. Everyone say recent. The synonym is a latest and the antonym is old. It is an adjective and it means happening or starting from a short time ago. So not too long ago. And since there is only one example sentence here, let's read it together, ready? I showed my friends all the pictures I took from my recent trip to Vietnam. So you're like, oh look, I just took a trip to Vietnam last week. Here are my pictures. <laughs> Next one here, it says, I usually watch TV that TV show every week, but I miss the most recent episode. So maybe that TV show is on Wednesday and you always, 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 always watch it, but then you miss the recent one, the latest one. So this video would be the most recent uh, vocabulary video that's going up on YouTube for us because it's the latest one. Next one, it says, I could tell that it was a recent picture of her because of her hairstyle. So maybe a long time ago she had brown hair, but up until now, she just changed her hairstyle and it's black and it's curly. So we can tell that it was a recent picture, something that was very close to the present because of her hairstyle. Recent. Last word. Our word is situation. Everyone say situation. The synonym is circumstance, and the part of speech is a noun. And the definition says, the set of things that are happening and the conditions that exist at a particular time and place. Hmm? There's too many words. What does that mean, Miss Kimberly? Situation just means how you are right now. What's happening right now? The situation, the type of condition that you are in at the moment. Uh, let's read together the example. Ready? She was in a tough situation, but her friends helped her recover. So maybe she was going through some sad times. The situation of her life at the moment was not very good, but her help or her friends were able to help her and become happier again. Let's look here. It says all of the students handled the fire alarm situation very well and listen to the teacher's directions. Mm-hmm. Usually when a fire alarm happens, that type of situation is very hard and difficult for students because everyone has to be quiet and lined up and very serious. But all the students handled the situation very well. Next, it says, they tried to understand the whole situation before making a decision. 
So whether whatever type of decision making you have to do, you want to know the whole situation first before acting upon it. Mm. Wow, we are done our words already. I just closed my vocabulary book. And we cannot finish the video without the secret mission. So this secret mission is super easy. I hope to get a lot because the other ones you actually had to find the answer. This one is super easy. It says on a sheet of paper, you can choose any type of sheet of paper, just small. Make sure you write your name on it and your class. On a sheet of paper, write down your favorite novel and textbook story so far this semester. So which novel book was your favorite so far? Was it this one? Which textbook story was your favorite so far? Maybe The Ten Sons? Who knows? Please write down your favorite novel and your favorite textbook story so far with your name and your class. Fold it up and put it into the YouTube mission cylinder at the front desk. Very good. So now let's wrap it on up. Now it's time for you to review and self-study. And this is for contextual mastery because we all want to become masters of vocabulary. Review all the words again. Read it out loud. And complete the vocabulary homework pages. So don't forget to write down the example sentences here in this white box. And also to do the exercises on the next two pages. <sighs> Thank you so much for joining me again. We're done with week 18, and I will see you guys next week. Okay? Bye!